Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Ali, President and CEO of Core Gems, and I have a great video here for you today. We are going to look at five beautiful gemstones, but only a couple of them are authentic untreated sapphire, while the other are while the others are pretenders. So first we'll take a look at this one. Then we'll take a look at this one. Then we'll take a look at this one. Then we'll take a look at this one. And then we'll finally we'll take a look at that one. Now, when it comes to telling when sapphire is fake, you can't really use the color because it comes in so many different color varieties. So, say for example, this beautiful pinky orange, sometimes called the Pat Prasha, is just as much a sapphire as this beautiful sunset yellow as this deep royal blue. Now, are these all sapphires? Of course not. That's That would defeat the point of this video, but they do come in these colors. Now, the first test we're going to be looking at is the scratch test. The scratch test involves scratching another surface that is as hard or harder than natural sapphire, sapphire crystal. Sapphire crystal is aluminum oxide, the same material that sapphire is made out of. In theory, only another sapphire can scratch sapphire. So, if we go through and we test these stones out, we should be able to tell whether or not they're natural sapphire, or the same material as sapphire, at least. It's a bit tricky with a small stone, but there we go. And indeed, it did leave a little scratch there. So we can conclude that this is at least sapphire material. Now we'll try this stone out. This stone, no matter how hard I push or I try, is unable to scratch the sapphire crystal. That's because this is actually a piece of quartz. Quartz is considerably softer than sapphire, and thus will not scratch sapphire. Now we'll try out this stone here. Indeed, it does leave some scratches. Let me try that again. Hmm. Let me scratch it. Yep, there we go. Definitely scratching. Try this stone here. You can get a sapphire crystal on eBay. If you can get an old watch at a pawn shop, chances are it'll have sapphire crystal. That is also scratching. And finally, yeah, that easily scratches through as well. So, out of these five, we can rule out this one right here because it did not pass the scratch test. Now, the scratch test will not tell you whether these are natural sapphires or not, but it will tell you whether it is aluminum oxide or corundum or a harder material, which pretty much is just diamond. So uh, you can rule out um, any lookalike gemstones like quartz, which you can often resemble yellow or purple sapphire. So we'll rule that out. The second test we'll be looking at is magnification. Uh, all gemstones have... The second test we'll be looking at is magnification. All gemstones have inclusions, imperfections, blemishes, um, things that just aren't right. Now, um, the unfortunate thing is synthetic makers know this. The makers of synthetic gemstones know that natural gemstones have inclusions. So they've started with new processes such as hydrothermal, which actually replicate the same processes natural sapphires go, to, go through in order to make them. Now these processes leave inclusions, but the inclusions they leave are significantly different than the ones you'd find in natural sapphire. So look up natural sapphire inclusions on Google. I'll leave some links in the description below and you can compare and look at the inclusions and get an idea of whether the inclusions are indicative of that of sapphire, of a synthetic sapphire, or some other gemstone entirely. That should give you a pretty good idea. Loops such as this one are available for as little as three, four dollars on eBay. And um, 60, 100 times magnification should give you a pretty good idea of the inclusions. Obviously it's not as good as an actual microscope, but it should give you a pretty good idea. Uh, these inclusions are definitely not indicative of sapphire. These inclusions are indicative of quartz. And again, 
these uh, this takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of know-how to learn. But um, uh, once you get the hang of it, it can be a really effective tool. I won't go through, I won't go into too much detail with this because it does require some know-how and some research on your own time. But I definitely recommend it as it is a very, very effective strategy. So uh, just uh, do some research on that. Get a nice loop or a microscope and uh, this should be probably your go-to strategy for identification from now on. Now moving on to the third strategy, the breath test. Now this isn't my favorite test because um, it's not really that effective, but, but it works to a certain extent. Now, if I blow on this, if I blow on a stone, it'll fog up, obviously. Natural sapphires, the fog disperses very, very quickly. As you can see, can you see the fog on there? Let me try this one. Can you see the fog on there? Zoom right in. What is in focus? Do you remember my Note 5? It just focuses like that. Okay. You see the fog on it? Okay. So as you can see, the fog dispersed in well under a, a second or two. Now if I try this on this stone here, we'll notice something a bit different, I believe. <sighs> see, this, the fog lasts a lot longer. Did you notice that? Could you see that? <sighs> I'll show that one more time. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, the fog lasts a lot longer on a synthetic or on a non-sapphire as it does on a natural sapphire. And finally, we come to the most reliable, the most accurate, the most trustworthy, the best test point blank certification by a reputable laboratory. Now, I understand that <clears throat> some laboratories charge a lot of money. $200, $300, $400 dollars isn't really feasible for everyone. But you don't really need SSEF. You don't really need... Gemological Institute of America, you don't really need IGI in order to uh, know whether your sapphire is genuine. Something like the Gemological International Laboratories, GIL, um, they charge about $40 for a report like this. Uh, in Canada, they probably charge even less in Thailand. Um, I know in Canada we have HKD, we have CGL, GRS. There are several reputable labs that charge considerably, considerably less. You're talking 30 40 as little as $20 for a report of a very reputable lab. They'll have maybe not the latest equipment, but definitely equivalent equipment uh, to what you would see at GIA or IGI or any of those other big, big labs. And they'll give you a very, very good idea of whether your sapphire is natural or not, and whether it's treat what treatments are on there. Again, these tests were only really for identifying whether it's sapphire and maybe natural sapphire. These tests will not determine treatments. So for that, you would have to go to the laboratory level. These tests are a good starting point for ruling out if you have no idea whether it's sapphire or not. If your stone fails all of these tests up to here, then there's probably not even point in investing $30 or $40 for certification. If your stone passes all of these tests, then certification might be a worthwhile investment, especially if your stone seems to be of considerably high quality. Um, that wraps up our video. Uh, please, please, please like. And subscribe, leave in the comments down below what you thought of the video, what uh, any other tips you guys have, and um, what videos you like to see next. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and again, always try to look for the best gems you can afford. Travel the world, find out the beautiful gems that are out there, and just have a great day. So overall, using our test, we were able to determine that this stone, this stone, and this stone are indeed corundum. They're indeed sapphires, but they're not natural. We are able to determine that this stone is not sapphire at all, and that these two, sorry about that, these two right here are completely natural sapphires. 
um, I would go ahead and if these were higher quality stones, I would test them. This one's pretty nice actually. And uh, I would I would send them over to the laboratory to be tested and certified. These stones, I wouldn't even bother with. Hope that gives you a good idea. Thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day.